Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. For the first time today, Colonel Ajay Raina retired is gracing our channel and I thought it was appropriate to have Ganesha as my backdrop because this is Sri Ganesha of a very distinguished soldier and he, is, uh, he actually lives very close to the border. And you're going to listen to him about uh, you know a lot of experiences of what it feels to be along the border as we hear sounds of you know uh, is there a violation in ceasefire what constitutes a violation in ceasefire everything that you wanted to know but were afraid to ask let's welcome colonel ajay rana colonel ji namaskar and welcome to p guru's channel namaskar namaskar shri ji is a privilege to be here uh, let's do om ganeshai nama so, Sarji, um, before we jump into this, viewers, I want us to encourage Colonel Rena to come back. He's a great recounter of tales and stories. He has, he sets it up so nicely. I'm sure you've heard him in other channels before. Adi Achint, for example, he's a regular there. And I want us to, you know, give him a rousing welcome. So please like this video. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, do subscribe to our channel. Colonel Rena ji. First off, I'm going to straight out ask this question. Why did you choose to be so close to the border, sir? <laughs> Once upon a time, our ancestors lived on the other side of... This is not a border, this is a line of control. So hmm. the distinction between two is that line of con control is the imaginary line which uh, kind of runs between present-day Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. So as we move towards Punjab, so it is international border, life there is different. Our, ours is more on the edge kind. So once upon a time, our ancestors, and that too not too far back, my father himself was a resident of an area which is now a part of POJK, a place called Bagh. Bagh is uh, northwest of Punch. So uh, when we migrated from there in 1947 during a turmoil, uh, we first went to Himachal Pradesh. There's a very famous World War II camp called Yol Camp. A uh, few listeners probably will, will know, but uh, I'll just introduce that uh, British had created a camp for PWs, prisoner of wars of World War II in Himachal Pradesh. So once wo World War II got over and this 1947 happened, so most of the uh, refugees, we are refugees, you know, uh, were brought it into Yol camp, uh, refugees from mountains, our area, and uh, then given an offer either to go to Rajasthan or uh, go back to Jammu and Kashmir. So people from hills who are used to snow and you know cold weather, they won't have survived in Rajasthan. Few of them went and came back. So they brought us back and plonked us next to <laughs> wherever the vacant land was, government land, because we lost everything. My my grandfather, like we were pretty okay, reasonably uh, uh, prosperous in life. Uh, my grandfather had a hotel in Lahore and one in Meerut. Both he lost during '47, and we had orchards. Why why Meerut? No. Lahore, I can understand. Why Meerut? Meerut again, it was a happening place. Merit was a big, huge cantonment. So, yes, yes. Uh, and hotel that time was not uh, hotel by, I mean, a kind of restaurant, eating place. I see, I see. Not, not I see, a place I see. to live. And uh, then when we uh, somehow managed to reach Yol, all that our family was left with a one steel tumbler. That's it. Left <laughs> everything else. So, in mm. that circumstances, whatever was given to us, uh, we accepted it. And our place, like many of our community, is very close to line of control but uh, our ancestors are happy they are, okay. they are getting similar kind of uh, climate similar kind of terrain uh, with a give and take few hundred maybe few hundred feet here and there in altitude so we settled it and now it's uh, our home we feel at home <laughs> irrespective of what's happening around us colonel rena ji i want to ask you a question i'm sorry if you are if you're not finished please finish your thought then i'll no, ask no. you the question i, I have I, See, I'm, I'm, I'm looking a couple of years down the road, you know, India annexes POJK. Would you be able to lay claim to your ancestral property? Do you have rights right now? What is the law say on these things? Okay. So what happened that uh, people from uh, today's Pakistan, occupied Jammu and Kashmir, they came into GNK and Muslims migrated from this side of the line of control went that side. So our land documents were in Pakistan that area so all of that those records are brought back to by our government in following years similarly people who went across and left their properties here were taken over by a department called custodian custodian of properties actually the name is custodian of evacuous properties uh, in jammu and kashmir uh, till 2019 
those properties were given to people like us those who came and also those who came from nowhere but had were influential enough to pull strings and get few houses shops you know how how it happens yes so, yes yes many refugees as well as those who were not deserving they also got those properties and the rental was minimal i remember our house in jammu that time was 10 rupees rental uh, per month i am talking about 90s so market rate was not that low but we were paying 10 rupees so uh, we got houses few of us and we got land uh, but till 2019 that apprehension was there because this kashmir based governments would off and on given an indi- indication that one day our brothers who had gone into pojk and into pakistan will come back so that kind of that sword was hanging on head but then government this present government has declared all the properties enemy's property so when you have something called enemy's property uh, then enemy has no right so this enemy's property act has been uh, promulgated in rest of india in jnk it is not been formally give, uh, issued as of now implemented but is understood that in by you no know, by implication no pakistan is going to come come back and claim earlier about 20 25 30 years back there were a few cases when people came back and claimed their houses and our government jnk government which is always kashmir based was very happy to give them get the house vacated and give give it back to them so our land records have come back from there but shri ji why should we even look at that area which is not with us today you know uh, i am a local so while it may sound very fancy and you know dreamy to have pojk back why we are asking for trouble and if you have time and patience i'll tell you why 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 i have this uh, kind of opinion y- yes I- indeed so we will yeah. we'll touch upon that in just one minute because i want to yeah. get some of the big bang news out of the way uh, there have been rumors that a lot of firing has again commenced along the line of control as well as a little parts of international border Uh, in your opinion is this something that people of india should be concerned about if yes why if not why not okay <clears throat> see uh, technically other than birds and water anything else which crosses uh, international border or crosses line of control there's a is a technically is violation but what we seen over years exchange even infiltration of course you know keeps happening and those guys keep coming in and though it is a violation but it is not considered as a violation uh, we just kill them if we catch them similarly our teams also been going across and hitting them like surgical strike it happened and small little things keep happening though that is part of life when we exchange fire now fire is of when we talk of calibers so small caliber weapons that is from your handheld arms to mounted arms like machine guns uh, when that thing happens it is again taken in a stride we don't call it really violation it is part of a life on line of control when heavy uh, caliber weapons like artillery or long range mortars open up so mortars also come in different calibers one smallest is 2 inch which is okay nothing great uh, heavy i mean 120 mm onward mortars or artillery when it opens up long range artillery then technically the cease fire violation happens otherwise whenever there's a group being pushed into india that act is accompanied by firing it's been happening for last so many months so there's nothing unusual in that uh, they have been uh, we also been hearing these news about some artillery being moved across uh, next to line of uh, uh, control and all i'll tell you a ground situation when line of control used to be very very active in late 90s or most of 90s a lot of bombardment used to happen my house is only 6 kilometers away from line of control now to hit our place i tell you another in- interesting thing the day my parents got married you know my mother was a city bred girl and my dad was of course from that area so when this jo barat it reached home so it was different era you know electricity 65 there was no electricity nothing so the couple was resting in a room and outside everybody was sleeping in open it was month of september october so they were sleeping in open and suddenly this package came in and they walked into our village and then there's a lot of halla gulla and there was no army there was only in sundarbani which is my place there was only small army check post traffic check post which had only three people three army soldiers and if you look towards pakistan so you 6 kilometers away is a uh, uh, line of control in between there's a uh, you can call it mountain we call it a hill that that stands between two of i mean our village and Uh, proper line of control 
so one chokidar whom they had apprehended earlier and asked for they were asking for directions because that time they didn't have gps nothing this chokidar that watchman of some area forest guy he managed to run away and he went and informed that three soldiers that pakistanis have come so look at the jugaad or innovation or ingenuity of these people what they did one guy remained there and he he'll just fire he'll fire one round two rounds because they didn't even have much ammunition two guys they had bikes because they were dispatch riders they had bikes motorcycles so one guy went about 500 meters fired a burst then went 500 meters fired a burst other guy to the people the enemy pakistanis who had who were sitting on that hill they could see that about a kilometer ahead a lot of firing is happening in front so they were slightly put to caution that they should not be coming down immediately but when firing started so my my parents had no clue because our hindu marriages in this part of world are very very elaborate and takes lot of time and lot of days so they were thick tired just sleeping 3:30 or 4 my mom got up and she said pani chahiye so my dad went out to look for water there nobody people had just left forgotten about the couple newly married couple <laughs> they just left them <laughs> so it was a very strange thing that there was a firing happening and now my mom had that heel wala sandal and village uh, you can't no run road. with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, so in the middle of the night dark and uh, they're trying to run away towards where the post was because there was a road head where that army detachment was there so some of the managed to reach and the truck was there and they went to jammu so this is how our life has been but our experience tells us that pakistan when the lot of violation used to happen even then uh, no artillery round will reach our village no artillery round ever reached because to hit us 6 km this side and for their own safety they had to deploy guns 6 to 8 km on their side so to hit us to they, they would need medium guns field artillery wouldn't have reached and medium guns ammunition even that time before kargil conflict there was a shortage in pakistan army today after having sent lot of not after having smuggled lot of it into ukraine uh, i doubt what capacity they have to fire on us today uh, but i tell you we we can hear uh, machine gun fire whenever it happens uh, last four five days we heard nothing in fact lot many days we not heard anything so even if small violation is happening somewhere it is not uh, close to our place uh but another thing i tell you today in social media i mean this uh, era of information like you have this information sitting all the way in uh, the other continent uh, in 2010 11 uh, pakistan had fired rockets in punjab no firing anything across international border has a different implication line of control pe chalta hai line of control is basically a who's got bigger muscle and who's hmm. is okay international board is governed by international law you cannot like nowadays you have drones coming in this is a huge violation now why we are not really taking it up seriously and then pakistan will say oh we these are people non state actors they are not under our, our control we are also suffering pakistan also is playing the victim cards these days otherwise firing a rocket now why i am saying this what is happening in uh, israel and gaza all these guys they keep exchanging notes in one of our talks i was saying gaza guys have taken motivation from ltt my unit was there in sri lanka ltt also used to you come via sea land and whatever means they had of course those those are drones or not there so this template of overwhelming uh, part of opponents territory or area uh, with no regard to own life considering us ourselves to be expendable this ltt used to do same thing these guys have done but in between why i brought up this rocket thing that all these organizations they have connectivity and since their aim is same that is to slaughter people to create violence create terror they exchange so this uh, thing was tried in punjab it didn't flare up people didn't catch on but first time they fired rocket then uh, that was uh, i think september october of 10 uh we can surf the old newspapers you the newspaper of course carried the news in somewhere in a corner then india fired back uh, i think feb 11 just to warn them and they fired again in april 11 and thereafter there has been nothing so when people now there days is very usual question ki sir israel wala hamare sath to nahi ho jayega same thing shouldn't happen to us so then i tell right. them that if there are 100 points to be ticked on a security of your border or fence uh israel is 
fortunately unfortunately is probably ticking 98 using ai and technology 98 boxes out of 100 in our context more than 50 are human based so uh, that is the strength we have our technology may be jammed if israel could be done you can also be you know some with chinese uh, in tow with pakis anything can happen to our technological things if you're too much reliant on technique uh, uh, technical part on fence but our overwhelming part of our protection is based on humans uh, humans in form of uniform soldiers humans who are our sources across and the other other kind of things in assets all over uh, uh, in space everywhere so uh, in my considered opinion uh, we sh should not be getting surprised the way israel was surprised uh, but this uh, the thing started from present ongoing ceasefire violation best of my knowledge uh, nothing has happened as of now when artillery opens up uh, it will be considered as ceasefire violation otherwise if we either now we get bored after a few days nothing is happening this <laughs> is part of life here small <laughs> little <laughs> crackers question, question uh, colonel sir now um, you said that most of the time they start firing to give cover for people yeah. to come in so i think the temperatures are cooling down now maybe another week or two and then i think it is too cold to come in but this is one story that is being put out one side the other side people say that it is no longer possible whether it is loc or international border for more than two or three people to sneak in beyond that india is able to thwart any kind of like 10 people 20 people where a certain amount of damage can be done how true is this because once in a while we get surprised about these people coming and staying in caves having rations lasting for months on end which means somebody must have painfully stocked the rations there so that these people will come and take place what exactly is the situation that way can you just tell us a little bit about what really yes. happened because a couple of cases i've still not seen if the resolution happened or not go ahead sir okay uh shiriji i have spent 10 years in uniform in kashmir so I've seen, uh, and these 10 years, like in happens in army, it, they were not in a, in one go. So I was there in 93, 94, when it was peaking. I mean, peak of terrorism was 93, 94. Then I was there just around 99, when Kargil thing happened, 2006, 7. And then I've been also serving in headquarters, which control operations in Jammu and Kashmir. So I'm very clear about certain things. See, first, what happens is, Earlier, the infiltration used to, like you said, used to stop during winters. Now, those winters have not come yet. No, no. That will happen in, say, November end. Because a couple of feet of snow is no issue. Only when, uh, not only snow piles up, when the nalas through which they get in, I mean, those hidden things, when they become avalanche prone, so then they also find it difficult to come. So, yes, winters is basically a time when you are... We are generally confident, unless until it goes, it happens to be a season when there is hardly any snow. That also happens once in a decade kind. Otherwise, a normal snow season in Jammu and Kashmir means that say from December till about March, you don't really have to worry about West. You don't really look that side. There's a time you clean up your, <laughs> you clean up our countryside comfortably because those uh, jokers who have come in, they also can't really survive in forest for too long. There, there are places and like caves are found in uh, this place, uh, Pir Panjal range. Now, Pir Panjal range is a big mountain which stands between Rajori Punch belt of Jammu and Kashmir Valley. So on either of its sides and slopes, there are natural caves starting from 4 feet and then going down to 10 to 15 feet. There was a time when they used to come like before the fence came up. Uh, they'll come in groups. The local OGW, we call them, overground workers who are not terrorists, they don't carry weapons. They may not be preaching in mosques. They may not be having beard. They are very normal people like you and me. Uh, and when the money, basically terrorism survives on the jazba, the jihad, that's all, all. I don't want to use the word. To few idiots, that works. Kashmalam. Kashmalam. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for few people, it, it does work. But guys who are into logistics, the OGWs, they basically paid guys so they get money and they also then start to throw their weight around because people in the village will know okay, this guy is related to lashkar taiba or yeah. he may just be supplier but then he has a status which is you know higher than others in the society so it works for them so there are places 
in 93 94 94 95 in rajwar forest which is in kupwara which is called the black forest of india and i had the privilege of commanding a rashtriya rifle company there i was there for two years that forest is eaten up many of our soldiers uh, as late as 2006 when we used to go into deep into forest it's called black forest because you can't really read a book even during day time so undergrowth is so thick and forest is so thick so you'll see old markings earlier time they used to have jklf marking put on a tree a small pointer nailed on a tree indicating the camp of jklf indicating camp of harkat mujahideen uh, hizbul mujahideen hm that kind that era has gone nowadays what happens is yes there are people here who help them with the logistics they trickle down like you said they may come in a group of two or three a uh, large scale 20 30 guys you, that thing stopped in 95 96 thereafter infiltration always been 4 5 3 4 5 2 3 4 and when they start at the group of 6 invariably by the time they reach hinterland of our jammu and kashmir three or four would have been knocked off uh, on the border or in between many also die because of accidents many die because of injuries cold injuries things happen so now these people keep trickling but they know where to go because when they enter india these ogws then escort them to the place where the earlier guys have already come so if you are not careful say uh, when the border opens up line of control opens up say in april next year so say between april and may and june you will have certain places where you will have 7 8 10 of them sitting together who have trickled in in different groups so uh, that also happens when you have a person who is being written off who's been brainwashed and told go and blow yourself in a city or in a army camp somewhere then you actually don't need 20 people to come in see earlier system was they also have a tenure <laughs> by the way it's very interesting pehle their commanders will come serve for one year and go back because terrorism in kashmir the fighting edge has always been pakistanis and earlier afghanis early 90s they used to come thereafter they never came people had a lot of apprehension when this taliban government came no they not come thereafter they used to come earlier sudanese also i've seen algerians also used to come that was a different era the first half of 1990 from 90 to 90 95 that time thereafter in fighting started the complete idea of independence azadi this was started by jklf jammu kashmir liberation front and they were saying we want to be independent and when the heat got generated in kashmir pakistan said no 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 there there is nothing called azadi you have to come and merge with pakistan now kashmir is a very intelligent community our four corners of country have very intelligent communities kashmiris keralaites gujaratis and bengalis they have, i mean no disrespect to our eastern brothers they are also very intelligent but you have very sharp minds gujarati very good businessman keralaites you find everywhere you go in the world they are again literate good people bengali you know we all know kashmiri likewise are very very sharp people they will never merge with pakistan that that pakistan will forget so what pakistan did it raised a, a organization called hizbul mujahideen which exists today slaudeen's forj and through them they got all jklf cadres started khud hi marwa diye so by mid 1990s the movement became pro pakistan ki we will merge with pakistan in that phase initially when terrorism started every second guy went and picked up a gun some were taken to pojk for training some were trained locally just given weapon and it was a time of glamour and you know young guys uh, some somebody's love, beloved's got married somewhere else so the first thing he did he went and shot that guy and got the girl back or property disputes etc this is how kashmir started local issues and then pakistan is realized ki ye kisi kaam ke nahi hai so they started inducting commanders from pakistan so they were punjabis they were afghanis initially like i said later on basically punjabis uh but for this phase of burhan wani 2012 to 2014 uh, 16 2018 these two years after a long time so in, earlier the average annual uh, recruitment in terrorist cadre was coming down to 10 to 12 per year 2000 onwards burhan wani and social media the way pakistani used it very intelligently the recruitment from south kashmir crossed 200 per year for two years and there's a time when you would have heard that Kish- south kashmir is very dangerous lot of patharbaji you couldn't carry out operation you go for operation the whole village will come and cordon you there'll be 50000 people for funeral 
that thing started but for these two years pakistan has always been sending their own people to guide to motivate to push these guys to and even foot soldiers used to come from pakistan mix up both so these these guys uh, they used to come on tenure one year go back initially so they'll come with a lot of we used to catch few of them at times we used to speak them radio set they would be sent with a lot of news that indian army is raping ladies there kids are being killed here and they come they see the indian army giving them rations where uh, where civil administration is not reaching their army set up camp to give them medicines to give them rations to give them everything in fact if you take out army today even today because of corruption which jnk had civil administration which was defunct for so many years and one of the reasons for this dissatisfaction in jnk many remote reasons even today don't have roads don't have medical facilities now things are changing 2019 onwards so what i am trying to say is that earlier they had tenure based then they came up with this idea of fidain guys who will go and kill themselves blow up they were largely people who were undergoing death sentences or life sentences in pakistan the option given was go blow up yourself or attack army camp if you come back so come back was they also knew nobody is going to come back so your family will get 5 lakh rupees if you manage to survive blow up a camp and come back you'll be a free citizen so this is how this is how these things have been happening so when they're sending a human human bomb inside jammu and kashmir they don't really need a contingent two three guys like you said do teen aayenge but this is what they aim for uh nobody can say anywhere in the world that crossing will not happen because the kind of terrain we have in jammu and kashmir when it is fog and mist comes on and you know fence we have a, having a fun, fence you would have seen in punjab it is a linear fence with a lot of lights and all as you get into hills and then mountains of kashmir every time it snows heavily part of fence goes away you know avalanche will take it away weight of the snow it gets buried in thick so uh, periods last year a couple of years back they had tried to infiltrate during month of january we we lost four uh, special forces commandos in that because when they went looking for that as they were looking into nala the whole thing collapsed and our soldiers fell in front of them they were sitting inside a cave in the nala so they were just suddenly in front of each other so they killed everybody killed each other four of their and four of ours so it's not that winters mein ruk jata hai winter also it depends so and when you have thick forest deep nala few nalas which are just 3 feet wide 4 feet wide now you can't afford to have one guy a soldier sitting every 2 feet is it impossible you do that people will go berserk i mean we are human beings i mean i was in uniform once upon a time so there's a way of doing it so you depend on intelligence you depend on sensors and then you try to hunt them down but you cannot really if other guy who's decided to get killed ki maine marna hai jihad karna hai i have to enter kashmir and blow up 10 15 people in the market it's very difficult to stop him because fear of death is not there in his mind all that is looking for a small little place to crawl through and when there is a fog you can imagine there is a fog mist rain thunder snowstorm so many things happen people do come in so i always have a, this thing that military solution of course army is done very well in jnk something else uh, as long as those stations which feed this these these kind of elements into our country they have to be sorted out so if you ask me pojk the camps should be sorted out that army post should be sorted out and pojk should be kept away from india it is nothing but a nursery of jihadis they are my community once upon a time we were all hindus then they converted whatever i know their mindset because for years from uh, late it is what pojk kids have seen they have seen training camps and launching launch pads all across the frontier they have been getting motivated by people wearing arms and salwar suit pajami pathan also used to come so their motivation motivation always been this and i'm talking of this area which is mirpur ravala kot bag opposite punch and part of area which is opposite thithwal i'm not talking of gilgit baltistan that is a different ball game so this area if you say we want to take it back take it back for what shri ji local level in jnk you will change the demography 4 million people belonging to one particular religion will just come in and all with that jihadi mindset today they may shout india jai hind jai hind no no because they are cornered electricity there is 60 rupees per unit khane ko kuch nahi hai there they don't have things to eat there's no development 
so even if you take this part of geography this this geography is not productive there's hardly a place to do cultivation it is all mountains hills landslides prone area plus you have population which is going to turn around or up, upset the population demography of jnk state that is one secondly at national level you will have more people to feed because nothing going to come from that land kuch nahi hota wahan pe there is no gold mine no silver nothing it's just rocky mountains so why why we want to it's okay to have emotional attachment and th that thing as a resident of jnk though my home lies other side of your jk uh, fence i i am very clear in my mind that we are happy the way we are we must sort them out not try to get them into our fold this is my humble submission <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Saab, the thing about this about this is that just like the way you are thinking, as Pakistan becomes more and more desperate. By the way, I am going to come back to that Ukraine smuggling question in just one minute. So that will be one of the questions we'll be asking. Viewers, have you liked this video? I am not seeing enough people watching this program. Colonel Rana is a treasure to have, guys. I mean, how many of us have discussed about, you know, it's all great to emotionally get charged up and say, yes, we want POJK, yes, we want GB, but do you understand what you're also getting along with it? That's what Colonel Rana is laying it out right now. Colonel Saab, my question to you is, as things deteriorate in Pakistan, at some point of time, the civil war or, or a way to that, they could be pushing people into India because that could be the next way to try, uh, next method of trying to disturb, uh, disrupt things. I mean, khane ko pani, uh, khane ko khana nahi hai, pine ko pe, pani nahi hai. So that is, you, you are talking about a hunger problem. Then, and, and realistically, if everything is okay, what will happen is UN relief camps start coming in and trying to take care of it. But anything that you are mentioning, you are saying that it's better to do it inside that side rather than on this side, right? But yeah. these things are hard to define, especially like you said, it's a hilly area. This is what I'm afraid of. You may have a, a very good three-level border fence in IB, even parts of LOC. But if a big storm of people start coming in, how will the Indian government tackle that? Indian government... Uh... <laughs> is as unpredictable as Pakistani cricket team, which is playing Afghanistan right now. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they will do, but I, I would rather submit that in my mind, what could be a way of doing it. See, not only in line of control, even Punjab and Rajasthan, uh, barring this stretch of Amritsar Lahore, where we are actually, our, our built up area, the built up area, they're practically hugging each other. Elsewhere, everywhere else, you, can, you have a lot of vacant space on their side. Uh, line of control also, you have a lot of space that side. Uh, international border also, Rajasthan, Punjab, You like our uh, fields are right till the fence uh, and beyond the fence. Zero line, the border line is across the fence at most of places. Whereas if, when you go to Firozpur, Fazilka uh, and down below, the complete area you find for many kilometers, they have nothing, only their army uh, ranger post. And they're given lands to brigadiers. You, you come to know this this farm belongs to some retired brigadier colonel's farm brigadier's rank you know how pakistan is they distribute goodies among themselves by yeah, establishment. yeah so if at all it comes to that you know yes you cannot really ignore and say no no we are like uh even israel has been doing it i mean they've been uh feeding gaza uh, because this is this is a human compulsion and we are bound by certain international norms. Right, so my right, submission right. would be moment this thing happens I think first lot we have to open fire and tell them stay away. I mean, you don't have to kill everybody because bullet is bullet. And then immediately do something, either get international aid uh, teams or create camps across, across the fence, uh, across the border that side. In the process, even if they come half a kilometer inside, it's okay. It's as good as across the fence. We cannot afford to get them into our towns and cities and villages uh, deep inside. No, no, that will be suicidal. Uh, should not be done. Uh, Shiriji, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm there. So, so, uh, there's a lot of feedback coming from viewers, okay. and sometimes okay. they have to sort things out. So okay. that's why. So please continue. I'm, I'm fine. Please continue. So I would say that stop them there. And when I say stop them there, even if you have to give half a kilometer of your land to uh, for a camp, there is all right. Keep them other side of the fence. Uh, 
which if if our government is actually following them very closely see everybody is talking of pakistan breaking into pieces the implosion will happen adi adi achin's favorite pastime project ha <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's made a map also uh, implosion doesn't happen like this implosion doesn't happen overnight i mean it's not that one day we'll get up and we'll say okay pashtunistan alag ho gaya balochistan alag ho gaya sindhi sindhu desh aisa nahi hoga there will be civil like you said there will be civil war because whatever you may say khana you don't get food to eat you're not getting water to drink but first thing is to try to manage it where you live you don't leave your place nobody wants to uh, and once civil war kind of a thing sets in uh, that thing that army will push their the control the army will have on the refugees to you know tell them go into india that is again something debatable so we'll have time if our eyes and ears are open we will see pakistan getting on to fire that that phase when we can anticipate yes very soon we are going to going to get a lot of guests so there's a time when we must yeah 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 that's right okay <laughs> we have the logo also defense yes these, yes <laughs> this is this may become a re- reality there's i mean there's nothing big here but uh, it will not happen overnight it will not happen overnight one secondly there are many people who will not like this thing to happen us being one of the big ones because my mind in one of the interaction i was telling adi that you know sudden love which us has got for pakistan their ambassador visited our pojk which has never been done by any of them it is not done by them and when when their uh, ambassador in delhi was asked why did the pakistani ambassador go? he said we also went to shrinagar for g20 so this guy is comparing g20 with them maybe because india also doesn't tow line the way americans want us to tow uh, I, there are so many things happen sheri ji which you and me will not be knowing actually but uh, there are undercurrents so to keep india under check us has a very potent tool called pakistan it was used for afghanistan part of it was also threatened to be used for iran and abhi bhi india ke upar rakhne ke liye to ye tootne pe aayega abhi whenever it a stage comes when it's going to break there will be powers who will try to uh, kind of avert this implosion so we will get reaction time it will not happen overnight but if we let them come inside we had it we had it shri ji you take it then you forget about <laughs> forget about everything else but all this line you know that 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 thing in rajasthan go, go back please go back please go back please yeah go ahead yeah. go ahead yeah if you look at the map you see that uh, a prominent bend in rajasthan where you put yeah yes. this this neck yeah. so there's a huge acreage of land thousands of acres of land which is vacant so it's okay we can keep them there i'm sure government will be uh, awake and uh, they will do what is better maybe they'll have a better solution getting them in but the way we welcomed uh, bangladeshi refugees in 71 no no we can't afford that we can't yes indeed um the viewers one of the things i would like to uh, let you guys know is that uh, you know how far back uh, p gurus put out videos about the corruption in us politicians two and a half years ago a series of five or six videos where we were one of the first ones to talk about biden family corruption only now republicans are talking about it and even now nobody has gone to jail yet what i'm trying to say and what i'm trying to say uh, uh, colonel rana ji is that you know uh, us is a mess uh, and and people are still saying that the billion that are going as aid to ukraine nobody knows where it is actually being used because you you turn around they're back with more money give us more money you know <laughs> it it has become a running joke now as to what is uh, the how much money is actually finding its way into fighting the war so question for you you said that pakistan probably smuggled their uh, ammunition into ukraine uh, clearly us must have known that this was going to happen was it something at the behest of us or is it just that you know isi i have another product to smuggle make money off of i will do this thing into ukraine what is your thought what are your no, thoughts no, US. us 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 uh you know biggest uh, armed ammunition uh, dump of uh, us in uh, european theater is inside israel that you may be knowing 50% of that was sent to ukraine i see and I why see. pakistan why pakistan was told see ukraine equipment is basically russian equipment it was mm. once upon a time they were all together so yeah. nato ammunition nato ammunition can only be used on nato equipment so if they were to like russians 
bought back tank spare parts from us. So we've been buying tanks from the, them. So it came in news about five, six months back that T-72, T-90 series tanks, which we have Russian tanks, the spares which we had got along with the tanks to look after their maintenance, part of it was taken back by Russian on payment. So similarly, while NATO may keep sending leopard tanks and whatever, whatever, and what, like you said, who is Israel, mein pohunch rahe, Gaza, mein pohunch rahe, kaha ja rahe, weapon also, money also, that's besides. Uh, the Russian equipment which is held by uh, Ukraine army, the, uh, their own equipment which on which they're trained and they're confident enough, for that they needed Russian uh, ammunition. India wouldn't have given it. So Pakistani has same 122 mm howitzers. So uh, the video which came, you know, when the Pakistan later on uh, denied, no, 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 no. So Pakistan has ammunition uh, factory. They manufacture, uh, and the uh, specification is meant for that one double two mm. Another Fauji company, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, everything from pizza to <laughs> uh, <laughs> housing society. That of course, that 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 of course. <laughs> so, in my mind, it was on U.S. instruction because you know. Uh, Whatever you may say, like five eyes, ten eyes, fifteen eyes, whatever, US knows what's happening around the world. They generally know. So sending a consignment of uh, uh, artillery ammunition, which is not a small thing, uh, would be, they will be knowing. And in my uh, personal opinion, it was on their instructions, send it. It may come back to haunt Pakistan tomorrow. That is, <laughs> that is a different thing. <laughs> That's one reason Pakistan is hesitant getting too much into China. China has left China and left Pakistan on the side. Otherwise, this axis which is coming up, Russia, China, Pakistan, Iran, uh, the US is going to look after Pakistan just to break that uh, nexus or that <laughs> corridor. Yes, indeed. And, and viewers, again, in the United States Department of State, I have at least identified three different groups. One that thinks pro-America, one that thinks pro-Pakistan, one that thinks pro-Iran. Believe it or not, there is a pro-Iran group also. Awesome. And, and uh, today news is coming out that one of the senior uh, functionaries in the Biden administration is a pro-Hamas person. And, and all the her statements and everything, she has a sister also in that administration. What, my point is, these people were, they are supposed to have been confirmed. Looks like no vetting process was done. These links were established many years ago. So in the United States, Biden administration has reached a new low. I'm saying this, Ajay uh, Renaji, because there's another problem that they don't even know how many terrorists have infiltrated into the uh, US. For some time, the border was completely open. Nobody was even checking who was coming and who was going. So much so, last month, 260,000 illegals came in. And these people, there was no place to put them because they are already backed up by millions. You know what they did? They brought them into places like San Diego and, and they just gave them, okay, do you have any family somewhere in the US? Uh, one guy says, yeah, I have sure, Chicago. Okay, <laughs> take the bus fare. <laughs> so they don't even know how they are going to capture it because see, according to US law, every illegal has to get his day in the court and a judge has to determine whether this person can stay or he has to be deported. Basically, sufficient grounds for being uh, admitted into the United States. With so many millions, I don't even know what kind of a plan they have. All I'm trying to say, uh, Renaji, is until it happens at home, US will not do any different. Today or yesterday, and I'm going to give a, a more detailed uh, monologue on this. Minneapolis, where Ilhan Omar is the congresswoman, one car was trying to say there are protests, you know. People have cleverly taken a Hamas act of terror into a Palestine issue. And, and, and still, people are not trying to separate the two. They, you have to tell them, look, you cannot be supporting something what the Hamas did. Understand and accept that that was wrong before you talk about the other thing. Don't link the two. And, and this is where the problem is. And the US is slowly, it's like a slow fuse, you know, it's slowly waking up to the reality that some of the areas and cities are getting out of control. So this one guy tries to, you know, gently go take his car through. He gets dragged out, pepper spray on his face, and, and somehow he managed to escape. But even then, people are screaming, don't let him go, don't let him go. What are you trying to do? This is just another person like you. I mean, it could, he could also be a Palestinian American. Madness. In some areas in the cities in the US, right now there is madness. That's all I can say. 
And all this happened because of what you said that, you know, the US knows that they are doing everything and yet they are not able to control their own borders. That is the situation today. And it's very sad, but that is the situation. Now, let's get back to... Um, just for one small point, Shirji. Yeah. The senior functionary of US is Hamas guy because who raised Hamas? Who's father of Hamas? I, I'm asked, I don't know. You please can enlighten yeah, in like US is Israel. US is Israel. There's no doubt. To put PLO down, to counter uh, influence of Yasser Arafat's uh, organization, they created Hamas. And Hamas was brought in as an NGO. That NGO did a lot of good work in 80s and 90s in Gaza, inside Gaza. Uh, but it's like, uh, it's like uh, in uh, India, we had uh, people call him Bindra Wale. I call him Indra Wale because Indra Gandhi created some monster and he turned around and killed, killed her. So this is that kind of situation. So Hamas name, you will not find, you, but the previous name of Hamas, which is Arabic name and which basically was NGO, the weapons, they were actually used to gain intelligence against PLO, PLA, Fateh uh, initially, then they were used to counter them. At one point of time, uh, their leadership, the army part of it is actually gone out of the hand. Kutsi, no, Iran also people say Iran, Iran, I'll say Qatar. Iran is a interesting thing, uh, Shiriji, how these layers work. 2% of Palestinians are Shias. And the country which is willing to burn itself and plunge into war is Iran, which is Shia. 98% of Palestinians are Sunnis. Hamas, of course, is Sunni. So, ye, what actually happens, why it is happening, there are so many layers within layers. Because when you look at ideology or look of, uh, if you talk of uh, ideology or uh, talk only of belief, then Sunnis and Shias don't uh, see eye to eye. Why should Iran actually go and fight for a majority Sunni population uh, and take Panga with the US and with Israel and with everybody else? So, these connections and those linkages run so deep. Uh, so you and uh, US, please don't be surprised. <laughs> you know one or two Hamas guys, there'll be more people who were connected with Hamas. So once you've been connected with the organization and you have worked and raised it, that the affinity stays. Even if you are a very patriot, patriotic uh, US citizen, that soft corner remains. Because you live in a fancy world, oh, those days, those days we did this, we did that. So this is what I wanted to just add to what you said. Thank you so much, sir. Now, the, the, the last question before we take some viewers' questions yeah. is um, in, in Palestine uh, mindset, right? They say free Palestine. And very anytime Israel said, yes, we will give you uh, your own place in whatever place we have, they said, no, we don't want that. We don't want Israel to exist. We want all the Israelis to go jump into the ocean. There are 7 million, 7 to 8 million Jews and about 2 million Arabs who are having a very nice life in, in Israel, what is called today Israel. So, so this concept of free Palestine has no meaning when, when they see that the final goal is for them to obliterate what is now become Israel. It's one of the first world countries now. And, and this mindset, I don't understand why people are not understanding what free Palestine means. These guys don't, there is, this is not, it's not negotiable at all. And, and what has, what, what surprised me, sir, is that in one of the bigger cities in the United States, you have doctors, paramedics, in other words, very educated people wearing their white uniform with stethoscopes, marching in the streets, you know, rooting for, we want a free Palestine. Do you understand what you're asking for? Have you not shown it? Has the, hasn't Hamas shown its hand? By doing what they did. So my question to you is, why is this uh, complete, uh, you know, uh, lack of logic in in supporting this, and and why are they not able to differentiate between an act of terror and a cause, a cause even as flawed as it is? Why are they not able to separate it? Shri, this is what agenda does, what narrative does. <clears throat> we had farmers protest here in India. And uh, I also went there, drove through there. You will not believe me, and many people will not like to believe me, but this is a fact that more than 50% of those guys who were sitting on Dharna outside of Delhi, they didn't know what was the reason. They didn't know. If you ask them, 
पढ़े लिखे पीपल ऑन ट्विटर माई फ्रेंड्स हुर सपोर्टिंग फार्मर्स प्रोटेस्ट इंक्लूडिंग फ्यू फ्राम आर्मी वेटर आई यूज टू आज दम ट्विटर और पर्सनल मैसेज प्लीज टेल मी वॉट इज रॉन्ग विद दिस फार्म बिल दिस नो मोदी इज डो मच मोदी इज डिक्टेटर सो वन और नेरेटिव इज मेड टू रन थ्रू अ सोसाइटी एंड हाउ मेनी ऑफ एस्टली गोइंग टू हिस्ट्री एंड अंडरस्टैंड वॉट द प्रॉब्लम इज एंड वॉट इज द डिमांड इज लाइक यू सेट इफ डिमांड इज टू थ्रो एवरी एवरी जू इन टू सी देन हाउ दैट डिमांड कैन इधर भी जस्टिफाइड और सपोर्टेड but that is if you understand what is the demand is you are you don't understand that what you are made to understand is that there is a country called israel who is killing raping and bombarding you know, poor palestinians who are asking for many people don't even can't they can't even point out where israel is on the map i mean let's be very honest about it so this is how protest you have porn stars coming and supporting farm bill same porn star is supporting palestine so but i have another take on this is that india india pakistan and israel these are legacies of colonial rule so what british has created here and they created there uh, i was reading a very interesting uh, uh, article somewhere that if if there were no jews by the way i somehow have a feeling and which is a fact i mean you can counter it the maximum uh, torture or maltreatment or uh, what do you say exploitation of jews has happened in europe arabs actually didn't uh, do anything to jews initially whatever is happen holocaust the migration everything is triggered in europe uh, but <clears throat> i was reading a very interesting article where the, the writer says that in case suppose there were no jews in this part of the world america would have create invented israel i mean something like israel so israel was invention to have a foothold in a territory around which was lot of oil and other things and if you take out israel and you take out lebanon was of course christian uh, countries once upon a time mini paris and all but they wanted something of size and geographical location as israel is to have their own interest being looked after in that part of the world having said that uh, it's not only in us it is everywhere india us you pakistan you see people protesting you ask them they don't know they they don't want to know so aaj aap you send a video across uh, to somebody and you write you kind of doctor it a bit people will start believing it so me and you and me will ask this think about it ki what is palestine what is free palestine how can you throw israelis into so uh, sea or how can palestinian be thrown into sea ocean both ways impossible so two two state is what is going to be the final solution how it happens why it ha- will happen imagine agar hamas na aata had hamas not been there possibly the two state solution would have been implemented possibly because uh, yasser arafat had c- come around and he, he had seen the logic of the day then who created hoz hamas to so when when big players play games like this shri ji uh, so it's very diff- easy to uh, <laughs> create a mob give feed them with a narrative and they will carry on and uske baad wahi hoga car se nikalenge marenge this is sad part but this is a fact this is how it goes this is how it happens thank you sir it was a fascinating uh, discussion and exchange of views and uh, we have a few questions for you colonel rena if you don't mind uh, we may run a little bit over one hour if you don't mind sir <laughs> i have no issues i have taken one and a half hours off <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much thank you j bjp colonel rena please launch a youtube channel for jammu <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks uh, jay bjp the issue with me is that i am too much uh, involved in the writing and travel so youtube actually ask shri ji he will tell you how much effort and time you need is is actually <laughs> something very very difficult and uh, let's see ganesha willing some time but as of now it looks very difficult with the resources which i have or time i have at my hand uh, becomes very difficult thanks for the suggestions thank you kumar gopalan wants to know poonch region is really silent for so many days how please elaborate now poonch is incident free how uh, no mr gopalan poonch was uh, inert uh, in the way that it went it looked like it was sleeping for many years uh, right from 2010 onwards for 11 12 years poonch was incident free as you say but i always called it inert because things were happening now uh, at the cost of consuming 3 4 minutes i'll tell you what's go ahead go uh, ahead a bit of reality Pir Punjab stands between Kashmir and Punch region of Jammu. This side of 
Pir Punjal, that Jammu region, all of us consider ourselves as Dogras. So whether you are Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Hisai, it doesn't matter. All of us are Dogras. So you are Dogra Muslims, you are Dogra Punches. You know. Other side of Kashmiris. Now Kashmiris are basically the Muslims there are Deobandis. Uh, these Muslims here uh, in our part of the uh, state are Barelvis. So as you understand that it's like uh, Taliban and Labaik. One is Brailvi school of uh, faith and one is uh, Deobandi. So they, they don't gel together. They, they always have the issue with, within themselves. Both are Sunnis, by the way, but they have these different schools. So when everything came under control for 10 years, there was a peace. About four years back, something started, a new concept ISI floated into our area and it said Common Islamic Identity, CII. That said, okay, you are a Deobandi, stay Deobandi. You may be uh, Brailvi. Remain Brailvi, but when it comes to Islam, join hands because the purpose we want that is Gazwai Hind. So that thing started slowly, slowly, slowly. And last six months, from January this six now 10 months, Punch Rajori area has seen about we have lost about 20 Jwans. We killed as many. It's not been peaceful now, by the way. Off late last 10 months, it's been very, very active. Now it's been brought back. Day Israel thing started, Gaza thing started. There were posters in Punch market saying Hindus and Sikhs, please leave this. Not please, leave Punch. But unlike Kashmiris who are literate, padhe likhe hain, they are scholarly people. We, we people are hard nuts. So Punches don't leave. We, we, nobody's left from there. And we we are very proud of weapons we have, whatever weapons. So that's what I'm saying. Our creed, Punch belt area, whether you're Hindu, Sikh or Muslim, we have a different mindset. So those who are across line of control, unko, let them stay that side. They're all jihadis. And here we'll find up for ourselves. BDC's village defense committees came up in our area many years back. They were reactivated in the last four months back when so many incidents are started happening suddenly in Punch. And why incidents also started happening? That a lot of troops from this area were shifted to Ladakh when China came calling in 2020. So there was a vacuum here. So that's been covered up by issuing weapons to us. So our own people, villagers, they stand guard in the night and we are protecting ourselves. So Punch is not peaceful. It is. It was flaring up. Now it is under control. I hope it remains under control. Thank you. Gopalan. SAS wants to know, how is the ISI-CIA connection working till date? ISI Chief Pasha, who organized 2611, was posted in Sierra Leone Civil War 2001 when he brokered peace on behalf of the Americans. See, this yeah, this is a very good question because whatever Imran Khan may say and whatever document he may throw in air and say this has come from USA, Pakistan, as we know, is run by or controlled by establishment of army. Pakistani army has very good ties with the American army and so is ISI and CA equations. They for generations they work together. If if army uh, is doing very well in um, uh, Pakistan, very well in the sense money-wise, if they're rich, if their kids are settled in very good countries if they have flats and bungalows in all over Europe, it is courtesy money which CIA has been giving them. So Pakistan army, that's why moment Imran Khan took America's name. So many of us knew that he'll be sorted out because country Pakistan is ruled by army and Pakistan army and intelligence are very close to Americans and they are uh, uh, soldiers on rent paid for. You pay them, they'll go and fight anywhere. Saudi has been hiring them. The Black September, you would have read it. Whether serial, wherever Pakistanis can sell themselves, they can sell anybody belonging to them as long as dollars are flowing. So, CAA, ISA ka bada close hai. And it will remain like this. That's the reason um, China say China ke saath itna ho ni ra, sir, inka jitna hona chahiye tha. The way China thought that after pumping 40, deli- 40 billion dollars into C- CPAC and uh, Pakistan, Pakistan will be loyal to them. No. China, thik hai. China, they have some other, uh, basically India and then China that to a two front war thing comes up and then Shaksgam comes into play. Shaksgam Valley, which they gifted to China, which is part of JNK. Otherwise, organization to organization ties Pakistani army and US. No doubts. Very close. Now, let me let me ask you a question. Now, Israel ground invasion of Hamas is being held back, allegedly, at the US insistent to not do that. Why is the U.S. insisting? Don't the Israelis know what the ground looks like? Why is U.S. saying no, 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 don't go? Do you know? Okay. Uh, other day I was with Adi and we discussed this issue much before U.S. Uh, the president came to Israel. I had just said that U.S. has learned his lessons. You know, when 
Osama bin Laden thing happened. So they pulled out troops from Iraq. Then they went and infested Afghanistan. So what happened in the bargain? ISIS got born. The ISIS, another gift from America to you. See, you don't have to really raise troops. <laughs> Your actions lead to things. Like today, if TTP is very powerful in Pakistan or doing things, it is also courtesy weapons, which, weaponry, which was left by USA. In, uh, uh, so one thing they have learned that if you react, thinking that things, because plan is the first casualty of war. This is a very old saying in army that whatever plan you make. So I'll not say they are holding Israelis back. Possibly they are drilling the sense into them that, okay, go slow, go elaborate. Because somebody like, see, uh, Shiriji, fighting in built up area is something which is very, very tough. I mean, best of our troops. No, especially when population is also against you. One is you're fighting like Bangladesh. Indian army went into Bangladesh. They were built up areas, Kulna, Dhaka. So we kind of had a fight, but population was with us. Mukti Behni was with us, local support because Pakistanis had done too, too, bad thing, too many bad things to them. So they were with us. Now imagine that you have population and Hamas both opposing you. So yes, it's not that you cannot do it, but kind of cost of that war and the longevity of that war will too much. So there are other ways of looking at it, how you do it. One good thing they did, there are three parts like North, Center and South. This is one good solution. Maybe there's a case case in point to have uh, get the access to the tunneling system without breaching, come from seaside. That's why US is blocking that coast of uh, that area is being blocked. You, we don't know what is happening there. As a soldier, I would think that rather than getting so many troops killed, Let's use techni technology and find a access to one of the tunnels, uh, underground tunnels, and then flood it. Uh, how effective will that be? All uh, it may so happen that many tunnels may not be you know, interconnected, or host hostages will be inside; they will also be getting killed. So those those many things, I am sure they are doing it. Uh, but in my mind, US has not told them to stop. US has probably told them to have patience and go slow. Because Israel will go in. They will go in whether they go underground, they come from air, but not the way which is like it happened in Iraq. Like US just invaded. That invasion can happen in deserts in everywhere else, not in uh, cities like this. It will be difficult. Since you mentioned Iraq, I have to tell uh, to some of our viewers who may not be aware of this, two mistakes that the United States committed that could have been avoided. Could have been. First thing was that when they went into Iraq, Indian Army, which had a lot of experience controlling Iraq a hundred years before, in 1920s, uh, uh, Indian Army, British Army, but it was predominantly Indian Army that was keeping the peace in Baghdad and Iraq. And, and they had a lot of information about all these, you know, sects and groupisms and who thinks what, what to say to whom, what not to say. And, and India actually offered all this stuff and US just brushed it away. First mistake. Second mistake is there was this guy called Jerry Bremer who goes in and he completely dismantles the Iraqi army, which was the one that was actually maintaining peace between all these different sects. You can take out the generals, maybe Our generals and above, they were probably, you know, having some uh, leaning. But when they completely disbanded the army and said, oh, you don't have any more work, get out. That's what planted the seeds for ISIS because this is the disciplined lot. They felt that, you know, what did we do? We were just following orders. And now you're saying we don't have a job anymore. And that kind of drove them to form this ISIS. In other words, US, without thinking through this thing a little bit more, in a little bit more depth, they just went in. And, and I can tell you, even today, many people in, uh, they call it foggy bottom, but just loosely say the Washington DC, the Beltway area, the specialists, they are about to retire or have just retired. They still think India is one of those snake charming countries. They're not realizing how much India has intelligence having been in that area and having been used to all these civilizations. I mean, we, we don't just like that say uh, Baghdad se leke Dilli via Agra. There is a reason why they say that. People know what Baghdad is. Even today, we may not have gone there, but we know what that is. Yeah. Right. So th yeah. this this aspect, I think U.S. U.S. ignored. I think that thinking is now uh, coming around, not from again, not from the government administration, but from the industry, which has already come into India and seen the potential. They are saying these guys are far smarter than you give them credit for. 
and of course out outspoken persons like me drilling into them look you are not really thinking straight i mean no bright man would like to be told he is stupid and then proven why he is stupid that that hurts so anyway that, that's my contribution to the whole thing next question please supreet gowda congratulations for becoming a youtube member thank you we have gifted one membership uh, who's the lucky winner Nilesh Tola for receiving free membership and thanks for being active and engaging follower of P Gurus. So this is an initiative, uh, Kanalji, that we have started. That we every program we give uh, one one month free membership for people and then those questions get a little bit of a priority. If you have to sort through a whole bunch of questions, those are members. You get your questions get asked a little bit ahead of the general public. We don't try to ignore or anything like that. It's just that there's a time constraint as to how long we can have a program. which is why we do this thing so get in your questions early then you get asked your questions will be asked thank you navin kota i've been yeah. following your channel so i know <laughs> i know as history you follow good thank you dinesh kumar for becoming a member swapna joshi wants to know would they be interested in ghar wapsi uh, the pojk 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 see is a mindset which gets into your uh, dna if you want to play a game which is 100 years from today you may take chance but those 100 years things will happen lot of things see even if even if pakistan breaks implodes into four five things you think everything will be sorted out uh, as as far as threat from pakistan is concerned no the the tools will be different uh, the famous thing that old city new girl or new city and old girl there will be agencies sitting across continents who will find ways and means of poking us and uh, whether they use so called leftover pakistan punjab or whatever or at some point pathans may get involved though uh, uh, pashtuns have their own standard i rate them much higher than uh, pakistani punjabis uh, ghar wapsi something firstly i don't i don't believe in all this why should we impose uh, if you have see if you got into uh, you start believing in one faith they also have this strategy where they say okay if this kind of a uh, drama can help you uh, take your islam into a society do it if you can enter a society as a refugee do it uh, being refugee and entering a civil society which is non islamic and then converting into islam, what are you saying in europe is a part of jihad there are four types of jihad this is one type one part of jihad so why take chances we have enough uh, on our hands already if they want to ghar wapsi they can do it there my concept of poj ke shri ji is that poj firstly there's no k there's not even a square inch of kashmir in under pakistan occupation this is what narratives do like you're saying no the people don't know palestine our politicians been using this word pok whereas kashmir as for kashmiris and sheikh abdullah who 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 masterminded many things in 47 finishes at baramula beyond that is pahadi belt when you talk of muzaffarabad you talk of thithwal and gurez and all their dard dard people different dif, different world all together so kashmir proper which is kashmir valley is intact all of it is india so there is no k what is there in under pakistan part of jammu part of gilgit full gilgit baltistan almost full gilgit, gilgit baltistan my my way of looking at it is say tomorrow it gets freed freed by itself it fights out and becomes independent we should support them is all right you made them a protectorate protectorate we can extend our defense to them because then they are kind of cushion also and also you know it's okay we like we had something with sikkim once upon a time or we have something with bhutan though bhutan has gone and almost signed a border deal today with china that's all right so sikkim kind of a protect, protectorate model can be implied what our interest should be we should get our access to bhagan corridor through gilgit baltistan let's forget this southern part of pojk it is non productive had there been natural resources had there been something which could have benefited our elite uh, literacy rate zero development zero thinking jihadi how how are you going to waste your time and energy to get them into ghar wapsi and no no not worth it just look for a corridor to bukhan if you can that's it Rao wants to know what could be the implications of POK is taken over. Will it create more problems for India, considering the hold of secularists, human human right activists, activists, PLA warriors, political parties ready to stoop? We already spoken about it, and I don't yeah. think uh, if if army leadership is consulted, 
any soldier will tell them tell the government let's not dirty our hands we are getting not, see hypothetically if this part of pojk which i am saying jihadi pojk which is opposite jammu and opposite baramula uri had there been oil fields gold mines something like that i would have said okay it's okay let's you are going to so add what the other, yeah hmm. yeah no 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 we have spoken about it i think this question is already answered uh vb wants to know um wants to say a big namaskar and thank you for colonel sir what army wins in the bat- battlefield is lost at the peace talk shimla accord after 71 war of independence what can be done to reverse this trend creating a cds was uh, one step in that direction that at least uh, the political leadership will have one point uh, advice or consultation uh, though cds the chief of defense staff many of us look at it as something half hearted step which the government has taken uh, all that you need is a trend can be changed only with focusing at the right see when you have our politicians none of their kids is serving in army you don't have uh, you become defense minister even if you are a gutha chap you know nothing about the difference between army lieutenant and navy lieutenant and you become defense minister just because you are a politician part of a coalition so what do you expect you don't have unlike us we don't have experts handling our portfolio so within the given the constraints of system which we have cds is one good thing mrs indira gandhi had a, a group of five all of them kashmiri pandits who went with her to uh, shimla for 71 accord army was not consulted and the most shameful thing which happened there after is all right we gave it what we gave it to that's all right we we let 93000 half of them were army and half of back to pakistan and our 53 prisoners of war they are still in pakistan many of them are dead or they lost their mental balance we never we couldn't even think of exchanging that we are giving you 93000 back please give us 53 only 53 53 those guys even today their families are waiting so from that stage i am sure we come long way but what you are expecting i can't say uh, the reason is this your own son and daughter serving in army you will then understand but how many politicians have their awards in army and then we have something called gift of uh, britishers ias that is another lobby which which does his own games so yeah it's a model i only hope and wish fingers crossed that the good sense prevails uh, i mean uh, before we go to the next point I, on the 93000 prisoners of war see one of the things that is uh, that uh, indira gandhi government did wrong in my opinion because i'm reading this book called cowboys k a o b o y s by b raman guys you have to read two books to understand the geopolitics this is all india this is akhand bharat in the shadow of the great game by narendra singh sarila and cowboys by b raman yeah. he is brutally honest he puts down names which idiot said what and also there is one very interesting uh, talk by sam maneksha about what played out in march of 1971 and then babu jagjeevan ram <laughs> who was the defense minister and he, he said he couldn't say sam so if this is a cabinet meeting sam, sam maneksha is the uh, gen- general of the uh, indian army and uh, indira gandhi is saying we have to go in today and he is saying why it is not possible to go in today and then everything happens and then <laughs> jagjeev anand says sham man jao na <laughs> that's his answer this is the defense this is, minister this is how it is <laughs> so next one please supreet gowda wants to know sir namaskar how is your daily life in kashmir non muslims and how radical is muslim population in kashmir on the bharat side yeah so when we say kashmir we basically refer to jammu and kashmir which is actually wrong thing to do i live in jammu part i am uh, in jammu part whether jammu or kashmir the whole both the areas are uh, majorities uh, uh, muslims are in majority only thing is kashmir after migration of kashmiri pandits is almost 90% plus uh, muslim whereas our areas about say 70 30 kind of with 30 30 30% hindus left uh day to day basis our friends in jammu of course i told you like we have a, something called very strong identity dogra identity so hindu muslim sikh isai all of us identify ourselves as dogras so that binding is there uh, kashmir mein what has happened is 
I keep telling these Kashmiri pundits, uh, my friends, that the last generation which could have gone back and got resettled in Kashmir because their class fellows, their friends, Muslims, are and were would be alive for a few more years. That's it. That generation is fading away. So the new generation Kashmiri pundit who's been born outside Kashmir, he he doesn't have that kind of affinity. And Muslim boys and girls, young girls in Kashmir, they don't know these. They never saw those people as their neighbors or, you know, attending same functions. So uh, if I say that everything is hunky-dory in Kashmir, Kashmir is improved, security situation is very, very good. Everything is all right. But there's a large population which has that uh, mindset, which is radical, which cannot be denied. And on practical uh, level, what happens is if Kashmiri Pandits were to go back, all the lands and houses which these people had grabbed in their absence, orchards, they know they will be taken back. So that is one reason they don't want these people to come. Nobody achieve Kashmiris don't want these people to come back, Kashmiri Pandits to come back. So if if that is a benchmark that are Kashmiri Muslims ready to accept Kashmiri Pandits who migrated? Because in Jammu, there's no migration happened. We people have stayed there, fought there, got killed, but we not left our area. Kashmiris left. So my answer is uh, that benchmark, do they want wholeheartedly all Kashmiri Muslims in Kashmir want all Kashmiri Pandits to come back? No. No, religion is one part of it. Most of it is practical, pesa, land, assets, uh, whatever they could lay hands upon, whatever was left behind. So it's a, it's a very complex kind of situation. And Kashmiri Pandits themselves don't have an agreement how they want to go back in what form. That that issue remains. Yeah. Mr. Lee wants to know how can Indians enter the State Department? There are quite a few. In fact, they are very anti-India. Guy called Vedant Patel, for example. Anytime they want to put India down, this guy will be the spokesperson. There are hundred other people that they can choose from. They'll choose only this fellow. So after, back to you, sir. I, I find it very funny. <laughs> yeah. Indians, please don't take it for granted that every Indian has same kind of thinking or approach or kind of uh, that soft corner for Bharat. No. People have moved on. Money plays its part. Narrative plays its part. There are people, I was attending a, a military history seminar about a couple of weeks back in a very reputed school in Dehradun. And it was a, it's a very good initiative taken by the school. So sc schools from all over India, they send their students there. You know, there's, there's a delegate of 10 students from Jammu. This guy gets up and he, the question he asked me, and Sai Deepak was with me on the stage. We were sharing same uh, panel and he said, sir, this abrogation of 370, which has so unconstitutionally been done by government of India. Hmm. Imagine. And this is a guy who belongs to Jammu, who is a Hindu Dogra. But our universities, JNU, products of our university, you know, the kind of, you're talking of state department. We, in India, we have many Indians who don't support Indian. Uh, Fix it here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe Shiriji sitting in US can uh, attempt to get into state department. <laughs> Problem huh? That's the problem. They don't, they don't want people who will speak their mind. I mean, yeah. it, it's okay. See, the thing is, there are there is still a big chunk which is undecided, which is fair-minded. As long as we place them facts, we before them facts, I said, this is the reality. And that's what we are aiming for, always. Next question, please. Yeah. Partha wants to know, will leaders of Hamas leave Turkey and Qatar? If not, can the countries hosting them be penalized by FATF? Qatar is the richest, per capita wise, richest country in the world. They don't care about FATF. Turkey, as it is, this guy has been needling everybody, including USA. <laughs> He's also needling uh, uh, NATO. Why would they leave the uh, comfortable lives? Leaders don't get killed. Their, their wards will always go places and study and become richer. He's a common man on ground who gets killed. That's what is happening there also. They will not. And FATF. Technically, even Canada should have been put on FATF list uh, for hosting uh, and uh, uh, entertaining Khalistanis. Despite India being a strong country, upcoming country, close to US. Has anybody spoken about this? No, they will not. Hey, FATF, F, uh, IMF, all these are what? These are all tools uh, created by Western powers led by US. And they, they will apply wherever it suits them. And they will ignore ground realities when it doesn't suit them. So who knows what is happening? Like if, if Hamas is generation of US, we don't know what's going to happen in 
it's a it's a very bad game dirty game uh, thank you jay bjp colonel sir is pooch only on vdc or army protection no no army army border is manned by army i have a very old pup 19 and a half years old he's blind so he's just <laughs> seeking my attention please don't <laughs> mind uh, so border line of control is uh, manned by army hinterland there's a mix of army and uh, police forces and the individual villages have the the vulnerable villages have village defense committees the last action which happened in rajori where uh, terrorists had come to village and then army went and killed them before that the first bullet was fired by vdc who held held those guys back till the time army arrived so it is wow wow sir my naman i i am just blown away this conversation is something that is a real eye opener and viewers please like share and subscribe to your our channel and also you know take this video and share it among your family and friend because there's so much that we have covered here in terms of the realities what reality means and 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 you know we all say yeah 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 we shall get back our land emotions should not come into this cold calculations of what do i get from this what do i have to give up to get this thing this should be in the uh, the whole may maze to solve this problem not that yeah it used to be part of us yeah but so what see the the biggest takeaway from this is what colonel raina says our own jnu needs to first we have to first control these people where did their their thinking come from so this is where we have to solve the problem and and uh, in canada I, i'm going to give a monologue i'll give you an update on some other things that are happening in canada very interesting that's the way india is gone on taken on canada and you see how systematically i call this cheerharan of the political leaning of canada what is happening india is systematically stripping them of every uh you know uh, lie that they have uttered in the so many years they are in big trouble i i hope india also cleans up there are some people in elements in india also who are doing some nasty stuff anyway we'll keep you posted on that thank you so much colonel uh, ajay ji and i'm 100% sure we're going to have you back to you know dispense your wisdom especially you talked a lot about the isi as an enterprise like you think of it as east uh, pakistan <laughs> company 1.0 <laughs> or something <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah so th this is this is a very fascinating talk we're going to have that hopefully in the near future because you need to understand what isi is doing we don't think that isi is part of the army anymore their budget is their own that is how i have pictured it portrayed it in my book also paper in money or that just came out about a couple of months ago so you can read a little bit more about it but he is the authority i have heard him so many times because every time he comes up with some new golden nuggets thank you once again sir namaskar thank you shish ji it's been a privilege and namaskar to everybody thank you